Hello, lovely podcast people. I hope you're well. This is a very off the cuff. I have zero notes whatsoever podcast, but it's just something that, for whatever reason, this always seems to happen. Lots of people ask me the same question at the same time. I'm exposed to something, and I think, do you know what? That would be worth discussing or doing a post on. But now I have the podcast. Here we are. So, carb cycling for fat loss. And just so you know, this is speci- I am talking specifically to fat loss here uh, about fat loss here because you could talk about carb cycling from a <clears throat> carbohydrate periodization perspective for sports performance, and there is some stuff around that that would be slightly different sports performance and. Sp- Sport specific adaptations, let's say. Uh, but anyway, that's we'll save that for another day. Do you know what? It's probably worth writing that down, isn't it? Carbohydrate periodization podcast. Uh, but and realistically, that's what we're talking about here: carb carbohydrate periodization, carbohydrate cycling for fat loss. And many many of my personal trainer listeners will know that there is uh, there are nutrition courses or there is a nutrition course a very well known one out there that talks about carb cycling as a method for advanced fat loss an advanced method for helping people lose fat and it's just not i did actually think about doing a podcast on uh, and I don't do them because I almost think they're so simple and I've done enough posts on them. But if you're, an, if you're a podcast listener, you probably don't have them. So maybe I'll do one on macro counting and fat loss. Goodness me. So many podcasts to do. So little time. But carb cycling. This isn't going to be a long podcast. I literally just came up here and said to Billy, I'm just doing this. And, um, you know, there's no research to discuss. So there isn't going to be a great deal for me to say. But I just want to talk to you in very plain language about this concept of carb cycling. And if, you know, when I do the post about this episode, if you want to go and ask me questions or that kind of stuff, obviously, if you have questions in this area or in any area, sorry, go on the website, martin-mcdonald.com forward slash N-A-N-P, not another nutrition podcast. And there is the Excel spreadsheet there. Or no, sorry, there's a form that you can fill in. We put it in Excel spreadsheet. And um, I think I've mentioned this before, but I'm doing a whole bunch of things about metabolism and metabolic rate. Got about 11 episodes that I'm going to do. But I want them I want them to uh, really cover the whole topic. So I'm, I'm spending a bit more time on that one, making it a bit more full. Full? Complete. Covering all aspects. So anyway, carb cycling. Uh, And carb cycling is big in the bodybuilding world or physique world or comp prep world and lots of coaches. And I don't mean this to be, I suppose there's no way it can't really be mean or it's not mean, it's just true, but it might hurt your feelings if this is you and I'm sorry. And if you know why you're doing it, then good. But lots and lots of coaches will mess about with carbs and even macros. That's why that that macro counting came into my head. Really just to give someone something to do, someone something to think about. And it becomes a bit of a habit for coaches and they do it without thinking. Rather than just spending maybe an extra 10 minutes of thought or an extra 10 minutes of a check-in or questioning, How are you doing with this? If someone is really bored, we talk about this kind of personality profiling within our consultation process, and you get this this kind of yellow personality type. And, um, you know, people aren't, you know, any one color or any one type or anything like that. We don't like, you know, metabolic typing. You're this exact one, so we'll treat you exactly this way. But it's tendencies. And sometimes people are of a particular tendency, like blues being very analytical, kind of a bit more numbers-based, like spreadsheets, etc. We talk about this yellow personality, and sometimes it's just about keeping things interesting. You obey principles, but you keep things interesting with different methods. And, you know, it's a little bit like exercise. Like sometimes, okay, we're going to use these crazy rope things. We're going to use these TRX things. We're going to use these balls. We're going to whatever. We're we're just obeying principles. 
and but we're just doing it with different methods so carb cycling can be a bit of that really i should probably have said this at the beginning there is nothing magical with regards to fat loss longitudinally it just doesn't do anything you know high medium low days it's just especially let me say this as well what's worse is calorie cycling and then the use realistically protein stays consistent doesn't it in any diet whether it's health whether it's muscle gain whether it's fat loss protein really is going to stay pretty much the same it almost unequivocally now carbohydrate we know is a particularly useful fuel source for high intensity exercise now depending on what your training looks like that's going to be beneficial to a greater or lesser extent we know that people can do ketogenic diets and still resistance train to a pretty decent level because resistance training isn't hugely glycogen depleting for instance although if you're not aware of this any geeks listening uh, there's quite interesting uh, newish data around fiber type specific specific fiber type glycogen depletion so we're getting depletion in fibers that maybe we want to be using more of recruiting more of etc so anyway that's an interesting one but calorie cycling yeah if we're having more calories in the uh, the day or the day of a particularly hard session so we can maintain performance in particular sessions then great but when macros ca carbs are being set at a you know weekly level but are being cycled even you know just almost randomly or whatever and and calories are being ke kept consistent this is where one of my gripes is is like i'm going to bump your fats and i'm going to reduce your carbs as though that is making some magical physiological difference and some change in thermodynamics or the physics of the situation of energy transfer so you know i'm bumping your fats up reducing your carbs on this day this is your low carb day but calories are the same and then this is your me medium carb day and carbs come up and fats come down a bit and then this is your high carb day and fats go right down and carbs go up. it it doesn't really do anything it all it does is makes things a bit more difficult to manage now for those people who have got lots of time and are completely anal about things and don't have a proper job and don't have children and don't have busy schedules brilliant it's something for you to think about and ma makes your your monotonous bodybuilding lifestyle a bit more interesting and i'm not <laughs> that sounds like a massive insult doesn't it but just bear in mind i'm talking about myself here this was me and i i'm not in necessarily insulting the old me it's not who i want to be now but if that's you, I, I genuinely have no judgment. It's co it's a great endeavor to have that's more productive than being a wrongdoer, <laughs> for instance. You know, spending time on the internet just being a troll. That, you know, I, I suppose I do have some judgment there. There you go, something for me to challenge my thinking on. And again, it is because these people have sad lives, but it's difficult to really always give people that empathy um, from that front. So if you're just spending all your time tracking macros counting calories changing your carbs up by five grams up and your fats down by a couple of grams all power to you but what i want you to know and what i want coaches to know and what i want some of you lay people with coaches to be able to gently challenge your coaches on is why are we really doing this is this really necessary now if i have a low carb day and my fats stay the same really it's a low calorie day we can call it either doesn't matter but then we have a high carb day on a particular day bearing in mind there are psychological benefits to these things of maybe you know we could just go lower carb day for the whole week and we would make more progress in fat loss because calories have come down if that's not clear but then having the higher carb days in there there is a psychological benefit to a very grueling process of fat loss and preparing for a bodybuilding competition or a physique show or a photo shoot or whatever it is you're trying to do but also we can target or periodize those higher carb days around big training sessions sometimes people talk about we'll have it after that training session 
uh, for recovery. Really, I, I would urge against that. There, there's no real needs. Like, and, unless you've got, don't put zero carbs after the session because you want some glycogen replenishment potentially. But really, putting them before in the you know, two to 24 hours before that session, you're going to do a lot better um, for that training session, having more carbohydrate available. Now, and having some afterwards, great. But in terms of recovery, really, we're, we're talking about protein intake for recovery. We know that we don't need carbohydrate for, um, you know, reducing muscle protein breakdown, and we don't need it for muscle protein synthesis in that acute phase post-training, 24 to 48 hours post-training. The insulin release, for instance, from consuming a protein source, an adequate quantity of protein to stimulate muscle protein synthesis, we also get also does the job of releasing enough insulin to get rid of muscle protein breakdown as well. So we're good on that recovery front. If we're talking about recovering levels of glycogen, you know, when is your next session using that muscle group? Do you need it, etc.? There's a, there's a discussion to be had there. Anyway, so really that's just what I want to get across is you're not getting these, you know, the middle of a whatever, 12, 20, 12 month, you know, week, 12 month, I'll say that again, 12 or 20 week comp prep diet, you know, mixing up carbohydrates. Now, the reason I say this, the middle of that, is right at the beginning of any diet for, you know, if, you, if you're a nutritionist or whoever working with a new client. I, I often talk about these, this transient benefit of dropping carbs, dropping carbohydrate initially doing a, a, the 36-hour fast protocol that I've talked about before, um, dropping carbs initially. The, it's not strongly evidence-based because really this, this kind of research will never exist. But you do see in terms of adherence to faster, rapid weight loss protocols, as well as seemingly short-term benefits of keto protocols or intermittent fasting protocols or whatever. Now, what you do by dropping carbs or intermittent fasting or doing some fasted cardio or doing keto or whatever, is you just see this rapid plummeting and, and it's specific to a group of people. If you're super healthy, super active, in great shape and you're getting into insane shape um, bodybuilding wise, it's probably not the same for you. But someone who's been living a really unhealthy lifestyle, who hasn't been exercising enough, et cetera, et cetera, for you guys, if that's if I'm talking to you or if you're the coach of that person, there might be use, you know, and if there is blood glucose dysregulation, if there is some insulin resistance there, getting insulin right back down to baseline by using one of these protocols. Um, because insulin res release, as I've said many, many times before, isn't the issue. But insulin resistance and therefore chronically elevated or higher daily area under the curve insulin levels are an issue and we want to try and combat that and we want to improve metabolic flexibility that's another one i should probably talk about at some point met flex you know if we're not great at burning fat as a fuel that could be an issue there's still a long way to go in the research on that topic in with regards to if we are more metabolically flexible, does that help us manage appetite better? Does it allow us to adhere better to a calorie deficit, which we know we need for fat loss? Does it help with general energy levels, feelings of energy levels? And we don't really know currently. There is some observations and some correlations that are interesting to observe, but we don't know currently. Anyway, so doing a super short period of this, just getting us to um, a slightly better realm could be useful because once you're in a calorie deficit, really you're never you're never topping things back up to full levels. Particularly, you're always in a deficit. You're always. I mean, I don't know how how better to explain that. Uh, you're never at full. You're never topping up your bank balance. You're never saving any energy. You're putting it in, and then uh, you're spending more than you're 
putting back in. So once you've done that initial blast of slightly lower carbohydrate intake, uh, a little fast, a bit of intermittent fasting, some faster cardio, once you've done that for a bit, you're done. There's no extra benefit. Then we are literally looking at this transactional bank balance scenario of fat loss. So yeah, that's why I talk about with carb cycling, it's like once you're in the process, it doesn't make any difference other than maybe bunching carbohydrates around really important training sessions so that you are better fueled for those. But with regards to fat loss, it doesn't make a difference. People go, oh, you know, you're boosting metabolism on those days. You're not. It doesn't happen. It just doesn't happen. It's been tested. You're not getting some amazing reset of hormones. You know, even, even if we talk about a calorie surplus high carb day isn't really happening in 24 hours. You might get some super compensation of glycogen stores, but you're not getting any recovery of leptins not going up. Uh, one of our master regulators of appetite suppression, increasing our subconscious activity levels, and you're not boosting thyroid hormones, you're not boosting testosterone levels, you're not doing any of that in a single day. Uh, we would need something like a three-day refeed, really, to get some kind of measurable benefit, beneficial changes in those hormones you know, up to week-long, two-week-long diet breaks. So, carb cycling, just don't, it's just not a thing. It's really just calorie cycling for, for all intent and purposes if we're talking about longitudinal fat loss. And hopefully one day we'll see that kind of thing removed from personal trailer qualifications and nutritional certifications and those kind of things so people are less confused. I, I'm genuinely interested in this day and age. You know, I... My echo chamber is not good for me, I, but I haven't seen boatloads of misinformation. I've just been asked a few questions uh, and they took me by surprise because I was like, geez, has this thing not died yet? So carb cycling, I am interested when I do the post about this podcast, you know, leave a comment. What have you heard? Has it helped you? What did it change in your mind? Uh, I'd be interested to find, hear, hear that. Right, short and sweet. Hope you enjoyed it. Until next time, much love.